I am Jim Carlson and live from the Gallup Studios here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup's Called the Coach, recorded on July 10th, 2020. Call the Coach is a resource for those who want to help others discover and use their strengths. We have Gallup experts and independent strengths coaches share tactics, insights, and strategies to help coaches maximize the talent of individuals, teams, and organizations around the world. If you're listening live on our live page, we'd love to have you join us in chat room. That link is just right above me there. Click on that. I'll take you to YouTube. Start the video again and uh, sign into the chat room. We'll take your questions live. If it's after the fact, maybe you're watching us on YouTube, or you're listening to us as a podcast, send us an email, coaching at gallop.com. Don't forget, if you're on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe down there. That way you get notified whenever we go live. And if you want to listen to us as a podcast, search Gallup Webcasts on any podcast app. Dr. Rachel Madlinger is our host today. Rachel is a psychologist and senior analyst at Gallup. Rachel, welcome back to Call the Coach. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. (laughs) <laughs> Rachel, we are, well, we're glad to have you. We have been spending some time in the previous program. We've been talking about inspiring a strength based culture, and we talked about communication. Very, very powerful and laid kind of a foundation for this idea of communicating in a team. And now we're going to look at this idea of collaboration. So what is it about a strength based culture that helps create good collaboration? And maybe what's the difference between communication and collaboration? Right. So I think about the word collaboration, right? Because I looked it up uh, one time because it's used so often, right? And it actually means getting people to work together towards a common goal. That's collaboration. And what better way than to help others know how to work best together based on their strengths? So I think to define what the common objective is, is so important to creating that collaboration and teamwork, right? And one of my favorite exercises I kind of mentioned earlier is to talk about you get the best of me when, right? So you think about in this project, this is how I'm going to show up to be my best. Um, This is probably not how I'm going to be my best, right? I think sometimes we shy away from those more tougher conversations, but this is when you're going to get the worst out of me. I think that's so important to talk about when you think about we're going to be working on this project together. I'm not very detail oriented. I need somebody who can organize all of the process parts of this job. Being a project manager on this team is probably not my best foot forward, right? I think it's getting people to talk about that and thinking about you know, what do you need from me to get this teamwork and and collaboration going? And this is what I can depend on you for. I think um, having that discussion before you even start working on something together so you can figure out sometimes just what are the goals that we're trying to accomplish. So so we created this, this idea of the of a framework around strengths and being able to communicate it. Communication by itself maybe um, gets us going, but this idea of collaboration gets us maybe in a spot of actually being able to get those things done, right? We're always trying to drive towards a result. When we think about some tools for an individual of maybe understanding um, what they're best at, it's it's maybe not always just clear in the self-awareness. Can you think about a coaching tool that we might use that might help individuals kind of dig into those themes and pull out actionable uh, activities on their own that would help them collaborate on a team? Yeah, I think one of the things is actually a tool on the Strengths 34 report, Jim, that that whole report is just a great tool, right? I guess what I look at sometimes when you think about discussing what gets in their way, I think sometimes we're, we're worried about only focusing on the positive during a coaching session, but that that section around, have you ever received negative feedback about this particular theme, right? And I often joke because sometimes our best feedback is from our family. They There's, there's no um, filters there when you know when my input is bothering my husband because I'm asking too many questions. He's just like shuts down, right? So I think getting people to be more self-aware around what gets in their way can really be positive. Or if they've had a really formal 360 evaluation that you've received negative feedback in that. I think that is very important tool to help people think about, okay, this is when communication isn't going great. And then it helps them start thinking about, oh, how do I, 
how do I navigate that and get really good partners? Or then you start as a coach, helping them understand how those themes work together, right? So we've got those packets of how these themes work together and being able to look at those and say, oh, those cards that really get into communication or input and helping them look at those themes. I think um, that's just a really powerful way to get started. And having a coach sometimes help them see those linkages of how those things work together. Like I do it just kind of automatically now after 15 years, Jim, but those, those particular cards can be really helpful. One of the forms I like to use, if you're a listener of called the coach, you've heard me say this before, and you mentioned it in our notes is the individual development plan. And that is actually a foundational form I use when we're doing team formation classes. In other words, when I have college students that are forming teams for the very first time, we know that strengths can be an accelerator in that collaboration space. If they understand who they are and then they understand who they are in the context of a team, that they can speed their process of production. They can move faster. They can do things better. Their quality goes up. We know all those things. That individual development plan then works with three. You can do five. It doesn't really matter. The idea is to be able to work through those, list those themes, move down through actionable goals or actionable um processes, things that we want to get better at. And, and really in the end, be able to present those back to the team to say, this is, as you, and I love this phrase, we use this all the time. This is the best of me. In other words, when you use these things, you get the best of me. That, that idea of collaboration on a team gives us some benefits. What are those, what are some really tangible benefits to a team collaborating well together? Or how might we know a team is collaborating well together? That's a question for me. How we yeah, might that's, that. yeah. What are some what are some benefits to that, Rachel? When oh we think yeah. About that? Okay, I think that's so obvious. I'm like, well, that kind of self fulfilling is they actually get stuff done, right? They're highly productive. They're highly efficient. They're accomplishing their goals. They enjoy working together. They have a social connection with each other because of those strengths. Because they see those powerful partnerships happening, right? It's kind of that that power of two book that we have, Jim, where you see those powerful partnerships. That's that's the heart of collaboration is because I can't be everything to everyone else. I need partners who supplement those things that get in my way. And being able to have those trustworthy partnerships is so rewarding. So those end up being your best friends at work, right? Some of our engagement comes into that too, because they really help you do your best. So I think the output is what we know about high collaboration is if you get people working together on a common goal, you can, it's almost like that multiplier effect. You can accomplish so much more together than as an individual. And, and we've seen that over and over in our research around engaged teams, right? So. Yeah, we've talked about, um, so we, we, anecdotally, we've talked about how this creates a better, how teamwork creates better production. Do we, is there any written work uh, that we can point individuals to on this? Do we have anything? What would you think of if, if, if folks wanted to go back and want more reading? I don't know why they'd want to. I'm a podcaster. I like to always listen to the, to this, but if they want to go back and do some reading, what, what, what kind of areas and advice might you give them they could go back to uh, for some of the stuff that we have? Yeah, I think it goes back to when we look at a strengths-based culture, there's an article that's posted that I just read that talks about the five um, signs of a strengths-based culture, right? So it looks at, you know, it starts with the CEO. So you think about highly productive teams can really understand that. And then it evens out to every employee. And then you have you know, evidence of a strengths-based culture is they have internal coaches, right, that are boots on the ground that are getting things done. Um, and you have insight into performance management. So go back to that boss to coach, um, I think, education tool or class or whatever you want to call it, course, is, is a way to get them thinking about that. And you also start seeing transformation in their um programs and around um, their teams and looking and how they're embedding strengths in the organization, which goes back to some of our data around productivity, right? We have a lot of research around that. And I think sometimes it's going on Gallup Access for a lot of you do that and typing these keywords can pull up some of these articles. That's what I did yesterday, just to think about, okay, what do we have around um, you know, strengths-based culture and thinking about the the key to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We also know that 70% of the team's engagement is driven by the manager. And so the manager is a very, very important uh, element, a very important aspect on this idea of team collaboration. When we think about tools that we have for managers, 
what what might we what kind of advice might we give to managers uh, around this idea of creating collaborative teams? Yes. Well, I think it's getting Jim Harder's new book. It's the manager, right? <laughs> Because it's all in there. Um, I don't think you have to reinvent the wheel as a coach. Because I oftentimes, I'm sure you all get questions on what good book should I be reading as a manager? And I'm like, it's so key to that. That There's so much research and Jim is brilliant and all the data that's around. I think that's why I love working for Gallup is we, we've got these really smart senior scientists who are doing this day in and day out that can show us around engagement even focusing on well-being. Jim has had some huge talks on well-being recently, right? And thinking about um, how those teams, because right now during COVID, managers are trying to, like I was talking to Jim earlier, everybody, about this feels like Groundhog Day for a lot of people. Just it's like the same thing over and over and over. And being able to get those managers to get connected with their teams to get through some of the monotony that's happening with all of us. And I think good coaches help people with their well-being as well. So I think our well-being um, Data is really good around that right now. And I think um, looking at that, it's the manager book. You know, I think every manager to take that boss to coach, of course. I know I've talked about that a lot, Jim, but I'm just so excited about what we're going to be able to do in the state of Nebraska right now for that. So. Yeah. And if you have questions around the boss to coach course, fairly new for us, send us an email, coaching at gallup.com, and we'll have somebody call you back with some, some details uh, on that as well. Rachel, in the communication section, you often talked uh, when, when we when we thought about the role of a manager in communication. We, we often talked about the responsibility of the of of a manager to create open channels and to ask when did we communicate well. Do we can we ask as we think about some final thoughts on collaboration? Can we ask? Can an, managers ask that same question to their teams and say, "Tell me about some times we co we collaborated well," or Tell me about sometimes you were on teams that collaborated well. Does that question work the same for collaboration as it does for communication? I think it absolutely does because those are so hand in hand, you know, right? Because I think about the word communication, there's lots of different ways to communicate, right? There's venues of communication. When you think about um, the word communication, it's a lot of listening, but it's also speaking and it's also thinking. It's It's all those things wrapped up together. So I think when you have someone who's working together and collaborating, there's a lot of communication happening. When you go back to leaders and thinking about some of those key quick connects or a developmental conversation or more of a, you know, chat around what I would call, you know, a, a little longer than a quick connect. We, we've got a lot of research around the leaders have to stay really connected to their teams in that way. And we know that that creates, creates engagement, right? Because you think about our research around engagement is I have someone who, who cares about me and who I am, and, and I have an opportunity to do what I do best. And if you don't communicate with your leader, they may not know what you do best, right? And sometimes you don't know what you do best either. So trying to figure that out together or what the projects are that are coming down the pipe. So I think those coaching tools for leaders around how to get those conversations started. Because I think sometimes you just get into work mode, right? Here's the task and we just need to go delegate and get it done. Um, and that doesn't always work, right? Because you may delegate to the wrong person. So. Yeah, Rachel, you also reminded me that it's very, very key to measure the the engagement of a team because that is a sign of their collaboration, right? Yeah. How well are they getting along are we using their are we using their strengths in their job every day? Do they have a best friend at work? I couldn't think of a better collaboration question than do you have a best friend at work? Right. Really, really important. And we've got tools. Again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. We have this Q12 assessment that allows teams to kind of measure that collaboration. Rachel, as we kind of bring this in for landing, any final thoughts on collaboration? Anything uh, you want to add before we wrap it up? Yeah, I think hitting on that last point of strengths can help facilitate conversation around what what should be our objectives, right? Because I think sometimes when you have a lot of activators and achievers on the team, and I see this in the team grid, right, is they're off just running, right? And they're like, but what are you go? What are you going towards? So those strategic people in the strategic thinking bag it can slow people down to say, let's have a really good plan. Like I used to work with a lot of engineers as a client. And, and I'm like, they're so big, busy building that sometimes they're not asking the question of, does the client want 
this built? Is this the right way to build it? Should we be building this at all? Right. Is this good, profitable work for us? They really struggle with that because they were always saying yes to the client when they sometimes should have said no. Right. It goes back to what are we trying to accomplish to drive our stock price and our investments and all of that stuff. So I think strengths is really about helping us think about why this is important. And I think collaboration isn't just a love fest, Jim, where we all like like each other and we're having these fun activities and then you go and absolutely get nothing done. I call that kind of spa day, right? It's like, I feel good. We did these fun activities. And I guess those drive me crazy because I'm like, I have maximizer. I'm like, I don't have time for this. Like I, we have things we need to accomplish and I'm not saying you shouldn't have fun together, but why can't we have fun and get things accomplished together? So have those activities mean something right yeah. based on our goals and thinking about how we're better collaborating. Cause I think sometimes you can get, things that aren't necessarily really getting us towards our goals. I, I love the example you used there when you talked about maybe this idea of activation versus deliberation. And then sometimes in teams, you know, the activators are leading out ahead of like, we got to go, we got to get things done. And that that doesn't always encourage collaboration. And really that goal, that that job of a manager to tell the activators, hey, just relax for a second. We're going to have plenty of things for you to activate on. Let's get some things to do it right to make it more powerful, right? And then turning them when and then time is right, turning them loose to get those jobs done. I can't think of a better kind of example around collaboration that really encourages it using those that framework that you talked about to really understand how the team is built and then to have those communication messages and to them to say, there'll be a time. It's just not right now. Or the time is now. <laughs> I always think in that Avengers movie when, you know, at the very end, um, the the Hulk shows up, but he's in his regular form. And uh, and Captain America says, so he, he, he gets, he becomes Hulk and he looks at him and he says, smash, right? <laughs> a, a great example of using the strengths of that superpower, right? To be yeah. able to go, he just looks at him, he goes, Hulk, smash. And um, it's just an idea sometimes if we just need the right time and place for that to happen and a manager can kind of run command and control to make sure we get that done. Any other, any other final thoughts before I wrap it? Yeah, I think it goes back to when you're leading those team sessions, right? That can be a great topic around how, how do we work best together and what are we trying to accomplish? What are our goals this year? Like I have a lot of conversations around that based on our strengths, what's going to get in our way of getting our goals accomplished? You know, let's talk about, do you know what your goals are, right? Some people have no focus at all. So they're, they're just in there doing stuff, right? And I think having that collective conversation based on our strengths, here's how we're going to get these things accomplished. Sometimes you have to start with step one is what are our goals and strengths conversations. I just see that as the foundation for everything because that really helps them clarify what they're trying to do as a team. And then you get into what's getting in the way of our goals this year. Because sometimes you get a team in the middle, right, where they're really stuck and you can kind of unlock that team session conversation around what are some of the things that are going to help us get out of the mud a little bit based on our strengths? Or maybe there's a particular individual on the team that can really help them focus or get back on track or set the goals and the measurement. Yeah. Yeah. No, some great advice. Uh, I, I think as we work through this, there's plenty more of this. We'll remind individuals we've got lots of great information and lots of great resources for, resources for you available on gallup.com. Just head out to gallup.com slash Clifton Strengths. Actually use that search uh, that's up there. It, it actually works really well. Donna had asked earlier, where do I get more information on this quick connect? We've actually done a bunch of writing and we did a, a whole webcast series on the five coaching conversations. Just go to gallup.com and search quick connect. I bet it will land in that search for you. Donna, we'll talk a little bit about it in the post show um, as well. If you have any questions, you can always send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Don't forget if you want to join us live and really the best opportunity to learn is live. We'd love to have you come out. Go to gallup.eventbrite.com. Create an account, register there, follow us, and I'll send you an email every time we post something new. If you want to join us on our Facebook group, it's just Facebook facebook.com slash group slash call it to coach. If you want to join us on LinkedIn, just search Clifton Strengths Train Coaches and you'll find our group and I'll let you in there. I want to thank you for joining us today. If you're listening live, stay around for a little bit of a post show. If you're listening to the recorded version, I bet we have more for you. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.